is holy, 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 and cannot lay aside his holiness. But as the son of David, as our mediator, he sanctified himself for our sakes. He submitted to baptism. He was born under the law. He withstood the temptation of the devil. He submitted to God alone and loved him with his whole heart in purity, with no mixture of sin or deceit. And he did it for us. And as we hear the truth, as we hear the gospel, as we hear the word of God, and as we respond, behold, here am I, as we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, we are sanctified in him more and more. And so for this reason, in Reformed churches, the preaching of the word of God is called a means of grace. God has connected his promise to the preaching of the word as long as we receive it with a believing heart. To receive that word is to grow in grace and holiness. In other words, it's to become more and more united to Christ. As Jesus prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And as we are sanctified, there is another mark by which the saints are known. Saints call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the scripture, this is how the saints were known. In fact, it's the first description of the saints way back in Genesis chapter 4 after Seth, the one given to replace Abel, started having children. When Enos was born, the scripture says, and then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. They didn't call upon the Baals, they didn't call upon Molech, they didn't call upon the state, they didn't call upon the gods of the nations, they called upon the name of the Lord. Chronicles 16, David taught Israel to pray, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among his people. In Psalm 55, As for me, I will call upon the Lord and the Lord shall save me. Zephaniah prophesied of this day of the church, when the church is gathered from every kindred and every tongue and every tribe and every place. And he said of that day, for then I will turn the people to a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord and serve him with one consent. Joel also prophesied of this day, when he said, whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul in Romans 10 quotes that passage, and he interprets that as saying, so if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then, to connect to our theme, Paul continues in Romans 10 to say, how will they call upon him whom they haven't heard, and how will they hear without a preacher? The called saints. So the church is holy, called out and set apart from the world, united to Christ by faith. They respond to that message by saying, here am I, send me, and they call upon the name of the Lord. Whom do you call upon in the day of trouble? When you are fearful or afraid and the world is crashing down around you, and you can't think of any words to even say except to cry out, Abba, Father, whom do you cry out to? The saints of God are marked by this. They call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The other thing we know about the saints of God, the church of God, is that there's only one church. Together with all that in every place, Call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Since there is only one Lord, there is only one church. There is only one faith, only one baptism, only one church. That church, notice, is visibly present throughout the world. It was gathered, in this case, in Corinth. In our case, it's gathered in Yuba City, wherever the word of God is proclaimed. Throughout the world, in Hungary, in Asia, in Moscow, in Pakistan, in Sioux Falls, in Iowa, wherever the word of God is proclaimed, and wherever men call upon the name of the Lord, there is the church of God. 
That church is invisible in the sense that only God knows who the elect are, but it's visible. It is an actual gathering of actual people, and these people you can see, and you can know them by their marks. They call upon the name of the Lord. It's an actual gathering of people in cities throughout the world who sit under the preaching of the word, respond with, here am I, and call upon the name of the Lord. And because of this, they are called Catholic. The best definition of the word Catholic is in our catechism, question 54. What dost thou believe concerning the holy Catholic Church? That out of the whole human race, from the beginning to the end of the world, the Son of God, by His Spirit and Word, gathers, defends, and preserves for Himself unto everlasting life a chosen communion in the unity of true faith, and that I am and forever shall remain a living member of the same. Christ is gathering together His saints, just as the Scripture has declared. The church is not limited to one culture, one nation, one people group. It's a glorious Catholicity, a unity out of diversity. It is in its beautiful diversity that it is one which makes it God's church. Paul speaks about the unity in 1 Corinthians 12 when he says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a first, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. He's speaking of the unity, the unity of our profession of faith. We call out on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the church is one, for we have one Lord and one faith. And we are filled with one Spirit. But the Spirit is wonderfully diverse in its gifts. And so Paul goes on in that chapter, chapter 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not of the hand, therefore I'm not the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smell? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. If you think about very practically what that means, is that if every single person in the church thought, spoke, and acted exactly like you do, the church would be missing out on something wonderful. For not everyone has the monopoly on wisdom. God has given great, wondrous, diverse gifts to his church throughout the world. And this church has a glorious destiny. We're called out of this world into a far more glorious kingdom with a far more glorious king. And therefore, the scripture teaches us we are strangers on this earth. We're passing through a country that's not ours on our way to a more glorious kingdom where rust and moth don't corrupt and no thieves can break in and steal. As Peter says, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. That's our glorious heritage. This is the reason we have been called out of the world and into his glorious light. This kingdom of heaven will be fully revealed when Jesus comes again. There will be a new heavens and a new earth. Our bodies will be raised from the dust and everything will be made new and there will be no more curse. And everything that defiles and corrupts will be cast out into outer darkness. And we will be forever with the Lord in the glorious new Jerusalem. Described beyond our understanding throughout the book of Revelation and throughout all of scripture. But that kingdom, which is to be revealed at the last time, 
breaks through in glimpses of light in this present evil age. It breaks through here in the church, the glorious body of Christ. And if all of this is true, Peter concludes with this in that chapter, chapter 1. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation or lifestyle. Be holy means be separate from the world in the world, but not of the world. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Don't get sucked into the philosophies of this world. Don't get sucked into the value systems of this world. Don't get sucked into the values and the treasures that moth and rust corrupts that's in this world. Remember who you are. We're the glorious body of Christ. We are the called. We are the saints. We are the ones that respond to God with, here am I. Send me. That's our glorious calling. Don't place your hopes on the systems and schemes of this world, for we are dust and fading away each day. But remember that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We are the called out of this world. We are the saints. We are one. We are glorious. We will be seen in all that glory on the day when the sons of God are revealed. The glorious body. This is our glorious calling. And to encourage us on the way in this pilgrimage, Jesus speaks to each one of us through the mouth of his minister, Paul, who says, Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that we know that we are not on this journey alone. That we have his grace and his peace with us, for he cannot lie. And he gives us his peace calls us to walk in that peace. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our gracious God and merciful Father, we pray that you would uphold and strengthen us, that you would open our eyes to the glorious light of the gospel, of who we are in Christ, the sons of God, heirs according to the promise. Whether we're men or women, bond or free, Jew or Gentile, we are all one and heirs according to the promise. Father, cause us to walk in that hope. Cause us to be holy as you are holy. And put our trust in you alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing two verses of him. 224. Hail to the Lord's anointed.
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.